Hello, um, this is Richard Ladner from the University of Washington. And today I'm gonna to talk about students with disabilities in the United States. I know there's people from all over the world that might be watching this and I apologize that I can't cover every country in the world. Um, but the United States might be indicative of, of what's happening in the rest of the world. So I wanna go back to uh, President Obama's State of the Union address in, in 2017. He said, in the coming years, we should build on that progress by offering every student the hands-on computer science and math classes that make them job ready on day one. And I would add to that, that makes them ready to go to college uh, on day one for those that are capable of doing so. And this is kind of the mantra for the CS for All movement uh, in the United States. Uh, it really started more than 10 years ago. Um, but it sort of got this name CS for All uh, fairly recently, maybe five years ago, um, with the idea that, it, that the computer science shouldn't just be for the elite. It shouldn't just be an AP course, but there should be courses for, for everyone. And that would be everyone, including those with disabilities. So let's talk about disability in K through 12. So one group, are those that are served under the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, commonly called IDEA. So under that program, a student would have an individualized education program, an IEP. And an IEP would sort of set the educational goals for the student, as well as any accommodations the student might need to succeed in school. <clears throat> it might say that a student really isn't capable of doing computer science and should be doing something else. Now, in the United States, there's about 7.1 million students in 2018, or 14% of the 50 million uh, students in the United States that are in K-12 public education. So that's one group, 7.1 million. Second group are those under Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act. Those students don't have a different education plan. Um, what they do is they have provisions for accommodations. And by my estimate, and it's hard to find real numbers, it's about 2 million more students uh, in the United States. So that would be 9.1 million students, or about 18%. So that's a big number, 18%. That's almost one out of five students have a disability or recognized disability in the United States in K-12 education. So just to give you an idea, I have the data for Washington State. <clears throat> there's about 1.14 million students in K through 12 education in Washington state in public education. And about almost 15% are under IDEA and actually 4.2% are under section 504. So there we're approaching, you know, 20%. So 19.1%. So if we look at just IDEA, there are some demographics from the National Center for Education Statistics. Um, the total number was 7.1 million. And of that group, about 2.4 million have a learning disability. 1.4 million have speech or language disability. 1 million about health. And 760,000 um, are on the autism spectrum. And I should mention this autism number, 760,000, is about twice as much as it was, say, about five or six years ago. So that growing, that number is actually growing. And then there's other groups. Now, um, at the very bottom here are some smaller groups: those that are deaf or hard of hearing, uh, those that have mobility issues, uh, perhaps can't use a, a mouse and a keyboard, um, and those that have vision disabilities, maybe use a screen reader or some other uh, access device. Now those are very small groups, but they should be included as well. And I should say a little bit more about those groups that they're the ones that principally use a lot of technology while the groups above uh, it's more pedagogy and universal design for learning and, and things like that. So interestingly in, in um, 2020, uh, <clears throat> The state of computer science education came out just actually about a month ago, illuminating disparities. And this is put out by the code.org 
Advocacy Coalition, uh, the Computer Science Teachers Association, and the Expanding Computer Education Pathways Organization. And for the first time, they had data on disabilities taking computer science in the United States. 11 states reported. In those 11 states, 12.9% of students are under IDEA. And it turned out that 7.6% of the students taking computer science are also under IDEA. So as you can see, there's a gap. Now, you can imagine that this gap could be, well, students that aren't capable, intellectually capable of taking computer science. They have a severe disability, intellectual disability, for example. But that group actually is fairly small. And I don't have exact data on this, but my feeling is that 85 to 90% of students under IDEA are capable of taking computer science. So there is still a gap. Now, disability in higher ed is a, a, another story. <clears throat> There's no IDEA, uh, just section 504. So all students in higher ed have the same educational objectives that you can't really change them. But what you can provide are accommodations under Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act. So students with documented disabilities can request accommodations through the Office of Disability Resources for Students. And that's the name at the University of Washington, but other universities have uh, different names for these, for these offices. And universities are required to provide those accommodations. So the actual number of students under um, Section 504 in higher education is unknown. I don't know that number. I, I wish I did. So there's also the National Center for Education Statistics, which has sampling data from higher education. And it's very interesting to see the changes over time. <clears throat> so in 2011-2012, 11.1% uh, of undergraduates have a disability by sampling, and 5.3% of graduate students have a disability. So that seems like a fairly reasonable number, but what happened in between uh, 2015 and 17, that number grew from 11.1% to 19.4% of undergraduates have a disability. This is more than the number of students under IDEA. Under, uh, you know, high school students say under IDEA. And 11.9% of graduate students have a disability. Now, you know, in my estimation, you know, the number can't change. Something must have changed. What, what happened between 2011 and 2015? No, I don't believe the percentage of students with disabilities did not essentially double in a few years. So what happened is the survey questions about disability changed. And I don't know the exact difference uh, that NCES used in these surveys, but I do know the, di the different questions at another level. So how did this change? <clears throat> well, there was an interagency committee in the United States agreed uh, in the past 10 years to change the definition of disability. Before it was based on an individual's condition. Were they blind? Were they deaf? Did they have uh, cerebral palsy? Whatever the condition is. Now it's based on the impact on the individual's functional abilities. So instead of asking, are you blind or visually impaired? They might ask, is your vision, you know, do you have a vision difficulty that's moderate, severe, or you can't see at all? That's the kind of question that they have now. And so it's a little ambiguous since they don't use the word disability anymore. They try to say, what's the impact? And I think that's the reason the, these numbers increased. So let's look at this one I studied a lot more, the survey of earned doctorates. So every student who earns a doctorate in the United States fills out a survey and they do ask demographic questions about disability. So, in 2010, 2011, it was about 3% of doctorates were disabled. And this number, about 3%, uh, was stable for a couple of years. And before that, actually, it was stable at about 1.5 to 2%. So it actually grew in a couple of years. So what happened in 2018, 19, 
is that number 3.0 jumped to 7.5 of doctor, doctorates for disabled. So more than, more than doubled. So this is another enigma. Why did this happen? And here I have the, the reasons. So the survey of earned doctorates in 2010, 2011 asked the following question on C10. Do you have the following disabilities? Mark yes or no for each one. And there they ask, are you blind or visually impaired? You can answer yes or no. Deaf or hard of hearing, physical or orthopedic disability, learning or cognitive disability, vocal or speech disability, or other which you can specify. So there they were talking about the condition again. And so that seemed to make sense to some degree. But then they changed it in 2018, 2019, or even actually before that. Um, so now it's a more complicated question. And it doesn't ask about disability. It says the following several questions are designed to help us better understand the educational paths of individuals with specific functional limitations. What is the usual degree of difficulty you have with, and then there were five categories. And I'm only gonna cover the first category because there's so many of them. And so they ask seeing, do you have difficulty seeing words or letters in ordinary newsprint with your glasses, contact lenses, if you usually wear them. And then you can answer no problem, slight, moderate, severe, or unable to do. So if you marked three, four, or five, moderate, severe, or unable to do, you were classified as having a disability. So actually the number of people that said they were blind or visually impaired or having the seeing difficulty rose from much less than 1% to 3%. So 3% of all doctorates have a vision disability, which is a very, very large number. Now, I wanna give some credit to the Competing Research Association Data, Data Buddies Project because they do ask about disability. And this is a survey I really like. I think it has some interesting results. It asks how I feel like an outsider in the computer science as a computer science major. And they asked almost 10,000 computer science undergraduates, computer science majors, of which 7.9% reported having a disability, so it was self-reported. And that number 7.9 seems somewhat reasonable. So that's 755. And then when we look, at the categories here on the left, we'll just point out all students with disabilities felt, 32% of them, one third of them felt like an outsider. Hmm, that's not so good. And if you look at the very bottom, majority of men without disabilities was 17%. So that's close to doubling. Now, if you had something in addition, for example, if you were a woman at the very top there, if you're a woman with a disability, um, it would be, you would feel like an outsider about 46% of the time. And it's almost the same number for an underrepresented minority with a disability. So disability, just being, having a disability or feeling you have a disability inhibits you from feeling comfortable as a computer science major. And this, this was done just a few years ago in 2018. So there's the women at the top. So let's look at industry. So the only thing I found in industry is a 2020 Stack, Over release, Stack Overflow survey. And Stack Overflow is a, is a question and answer system for program, programmers and developers so that they can get their technical questions answered. And for this survey, and there's, there's hundreds of thousands of people that use a Stack Overflow, maybe millions. And they're all computer scientists, basically. So, for the 2020 survey, there were about 64,500 respondents. And of that group, 14.8% um, reported anxiety, mood, emotional disorder, or autism. So that's about 15%. So that's a pretty big number. So maybe, you know, computer fields cause a lot of unusual anxiety or mood problems. I don't know. And then another... 2%, this actually could overlap. You could have a physical difference and 
and anxiety issue. So 2% reported a physical difference, blind or having seen difficulty, being deaf or having a hearing difficulty. So this survey is the only survey I know of, of sort of computer professionals that's out there. So in summary, uh, data on disability is ambiguous. Uh, is it a documented disability like you have to have in K through 12? Who documents it? Is it self-reported? What is the question asked? And you can get very different numbers uh, depending on the question asked. A disability definition is unsettled. Is it a condition? Is it a functional limitation? What is the level of difficulty if it's a functional limitation? How is that defined? And finally, you know, disability turns out to be kind of like an identity that somebody who has a disability might identify. I, I'm blind, I'm deaf, or whatever. Um, and so maybe identity is a better way to think about disability. So my take on everything is that disability is part of the diversity of life. It's there, it's around the world, about one seventh of the world's population uh, is said to have a disability according to the World Health Organization, it's, it's common. Diversity is good for computer science because different perspectives and skills lead to better products and services. And so we want these people with disabilities to get into our field and make innovations. So thank you very much.